Hi everybody. Um, I'm, I wanted to tape today's video because um, it's kind of like, um, I guess you could say, I'm kind of documenting um, things in my life that aren't the most pleasant, but if it can help somebody else, then I will gladly talk about it. Um, and it has to do with uh, disappointments in life when they happen. Um, and having expectations that aren't met. And how it can play with your mind and it can play with your faith. Um, if you let it. Um, so I don't know what the end of my story will be. But I can tell you where I am right now and um, how things have played out um, in my life, whether they were according to my plans or not. Um, I'm 40 years old. I'll actually be 41 in three months. I made a video when I was 35 about, um, or just turning 35, about how um, I wasn't at a place in my life where I thought I would be at that point. I thought I would be married. And I thought I would have a family of my own, and um, you know, just the typical fairy tale thoughts that we have about life. Um, and so um, here I am, forty, and guess what? I never got married, um, and I, of course, never had children because I didn't want to do that um, outside of marriage. Uh, um, you know, I wanted to have a provide a, a happy home for any children I did have. So, you know, I kind of came to terms with that. Even when I turned 40, I had kind of come to terms with the fact that, you know what, there's a lot I want to do in my life, and um, would those things keep me from... I think it's raining. Hmm, from having fun, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so, um, I was kind of coming to terms with them, like, well, if I don't ever meet anyone, um, or I shouldn't say ever, because I'm still young, um, but if I don't, I'm not young, young, but I'm not old either, um, but, um, you know, I could be alright with it if I don't end up having children. I felt like that until last week, when I, uh, visited the doctor, and the doctor told me, basically, in so many words, that I will not be able to have children. Um, they told me, um, because I'm dealing with, um, I have a lot of tumors in my body, and they have taken over my womb, basically. And um, they're so big, and the number of them is, is uh, there's quite a few of them. They told me that even if I were to get pregnant, that the uh, sac would rupture and I could die instantly. Um, so it would be a very risky um, pregnancy if I tried to get um, pregnant, you know, the way things are now. Um, of course, I believe in marriage first, so if you're thinking, hey, you're supposed to be a Christian, let's get that straight first. Um, so I... So then the doctor said, well, you know, we could remove the tumors, but there would be no uterus left to put back together. I hope I'm not giving you two TMI. So then um, I was told that they want to do a hysterectomy on me at 40. And so I felt like somebody had hit me with a ton of bricks. Um... And I was, I was like, the doctor said it, and I was like, oh, it's okay, it's all right, it's gonna be okay. And he told me when I'd seen him two weeks prior to bring someone with me, um, and I did. I brought my sister, my twin sister came, and uh, I had a feeling he was gonna tell me something along those lines because you don't usually hear a doctor tell you, bring somebody with you to your appointment, um, so. He told me that, and then wait, I, I I thought about it again. I was like, wait, he said, I'm sorry. He kept saying, I'm sorry. I was like, sorry, what are you sorry for? It's okay, it's all right. And then it hit me what he said, and 
he went out of the room to get some tissue for me and, and I just buried my head in my sister's shoulder and I'm sorry I buried my head in her shoulder and I just I was just like in shock the rest of that day I'm I'm actually kind of still in shock and I think I'm getting along because I'm not really dealing with it um, my big sister tried that encourage me <laughs> And different friends and family on Facebook. I've also been doing the same. Um, and I kind of, you know, it's one thing when you kind of say, well, you know, if I don't have kids, it's okay. But, you know, the possibility is always there until you maybe hit a certain age. I don't know. But to know that you'll never be able to. It's just um, nothing I ever expected to hear about myself. And so I'm kind of, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do, follow through with that um, recommendation that the doctor gave me. Because it's such a big decision. It's life altering and I'm not sure I'm ready to do that. Um, it's another thing if my life is threatened. Um, but I'm just not ready to make that decision. So... But the the hardest thing that came to me, I went back to work that day and I just totally screwed up things at work. Probably should have gone home. But um, coming home, I was just thinking like, wait a minute, God, you didn't make me to be a mom? I didn't come here to, for that purpose. And I thought about how I'm so big on purpose. I'm always like interjecting that in my videos if I can because it's just such a passion to me to just not only live out my purpose but to encourage other people to do the same and not waste your time here and so I was so wrapped up in well, yeah I've got a purpose out there I'm, I'm working on it I'm doing it I'm writing the book I'm, I created a website I'm doing all these things but I'm gonna be married too right I'm gonna have a family too right and that was my purpose but whoever said that that was God's purpose for me? So, I I I know both sides. I know people that say it's all right. It's not the end of the world, and I I believe that it's not the end of the world. And I know other people that say just hold on and believe God for a miracle. He can dry those things up, and I believe that too. I believe He has all power, and that it all plays because I am writing a chapter in my book about that. Why when God says no, or why does He allow suffering? But why does he allow painful things to happen? And I I can kind of answer that from one per, from many perspectives. I I suffered with chronic pain for years, and it's actually resurfaced again. And I had something called um, this. It's called the suicide disease because it's like one of the most painful illnesses known to man. People have committed suicide over this thing because there's no real cure for it. And I've had surgeries, and the pain came back. And I think that news triggered it, so the pain was like, really? I I don't know how I've been able to eat the past couple days because it's been hurting so bad. And how I'm even talking right now is a blessing and a miracle. But, um, so I can answer. I mean, I've, I've suffered. I've lived through watching my nephew, five years old, diagnosed with leukemia, and uh, gone through pure living hell and almost lost him. But he is a walking miracle that he's even here. I live with, um, and I take care of my mom who has dementia, and that is, I mean, to see the a person you love, the person that brought you in this world, just deteriorating, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, but you know what? Never, and then to hear this news that I may never be able to have children, which was a dream of mine, through it all, I can say, I'm not giving up on. If he said, no, you're never going to get married even, guess what? That's not more important to me than my Savior. There's a scripture that says, what shall separate you from the love of Christ? Tribulation, suffering. I can't remember the verse totally offhand, but what is it that it would take to separate you from his love? If you, if you had a walk with him or if you were contemplating a walk, what would it take for you to turn you off from God completely? 
and and then I thought, started thinking more about suffering, and I said, and I thought about this beforehand. I had said, that's a reminder on my computer. I'm sorry, <laughs> a little noise. Um, I had said, if God has all power, and I believe that He does, and if He has all knowledge, meaning He's knowledgeable about every circumstance and event that's going to transpire in our lives. Why doesn't he act when things happen? And then I thought about the story in the Bible where um, Lazarus, who was a friend of Jesus, was dying. And his sister sent word to come, Lord, he's dying, we need you. And the Lord, the scripture says he delayed, he purposefully delayed coming. And um, to the point that Lazarus died. And they came. he came to them and they said... If you, you know, basically, why didn't you come? We sent you word, and you didn't come. And he said, "This, this, my delay in this death, basically, was for you know to, that I would be glorified. Basically, that you would see, you would come to know him. They would come to know him in a way that they would have never known him before. They would have experienced um, an attribute of his that none, you know, maybe had ever seen before." And that was to raise him from the dead, to show them that he is the resurrection and the life. To have him and to know him is to have and, and to know eternal life. Um, and so I, and then, and I was thinking about these things before I got that news about myself. And so I said, well, if God can do it and he knows about it, why doesn't he? So it brought me to the conclusion or to the point that, I believe he can. I believe he does know. If he chooses to act in a positive way, as, or as we see it as positive, wonderful. Praise God. To him be even all the glory, all the praise, you know. But if he doesn't choose to act, if he takes that baby, if he takes me, if he takes the thing I love most dearly, if he says no to my dream, the thing I thought I wanted or needed or had to have. There is a reason that he sees and he knows that I don't. Even as I'm talking, this thing is trying to go off this pain. I can feel it. But I love him. I love him in spite of it. I love him not because of the things he's given me but because of who he is, because he has revealed himself to me in a personal way. There's no way anyone could have known things that, you know, were near and dear to me, and he comes and he just, through undeniable circumstances, has proven himself to me. And he loves me, and I know he loves me no matter what. And there's nothing that I love more than him that I would value more than him. And that's why it's okay if he says no, because I can't see the whole picture. But he can. He sees all of it. And if he says no, it's for a reason. I may not know it today. I may not know it in this life. But in the life to come, if he chooses to, to explain it to me, and he doesn't have to, then so be it. All I need to know is that he loves me to no end. And it's not just me. He loves all of us to no end. If he could give it to us, he would. But there's something concerning that thing. And the people don't belong to us anyway. They belong to God. They're here on loan. We're all here on loan to each other. And that's why we should treat each other right. But if he says no, there's some reason that I can't see that he does and I'm okay with that I can rest in that and um, there's a scripture and I'm just going to paraphrase it it says don't judge a matter before it's time so whatever has happened to you whatever's happened to people around you whatever's happened in this world that those perplexing questions that you don't understand just know that he knows he can he has the ability he has all power he created this universe and I believe he did if you look at it if you really look at it study it, there's no way any of this could have happened by chance he can he knows but he chooses not to all is still well 
it's because there's something we can't see that is not we're not privy to that would make it all make sense in the end I'm going to rest in it, and I hope you do too. <laughs> Sorry to get so weepy. This is a sensitive, personal subject, but if it helps someone, um, if it encourages someone along the way, then it's worth it. It's worth sharing. So take care, everyone. Hope you have a blessed day. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my new newest subscribers. Take care until next time. Bye-bye.